thank you everyone for joining us. We're so excited for you guys to be setting off on your journeys this year. Um, for all of our new students, this is your first trip. My name is Jesse Walker. I'm one of our Global Programs Advisors with Rustic Pathways. I've been with Rustic for about 10 years now. Um, I was formerly the director of our Tanzania programs, but I know all of our programs kind of inside and out. And I'm excited and happy to answer any of your questions. Um, tonight, we are going to be going over um, the basics of preparing for your trip. So I want to make it really clear we do not have time tonight to go into the um, specific questions about your particular program. So um, we do have a team of people in our office every single day that are happy to answer those questions. If you're looking to know exactly what kind of food you like to eat or that you'll be eating on your program or exactly what you'll be doing on day three of your itinerary or whether you're gonna be going rafting, um, more than happy to answer those questions. Please, please, please feel free to give us a call tomorrow um, during our hours. We usually have the line open from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern, and that is exactly what we're there for. We're happy to answer all of your questions tonight. We're gonna go over some more of the basics that are applicable to every program and for all the students that are heading out, whether you're new or um, you're an alumni, returning with us, we're glad to have you back. Also, um, a quick note, please do feel free to use the um, Q&A button that you have um, there on your screen. Feel free as the presentation goes. We're gonna try and run through this fairly quickly um, so we don't go um, too, too long, but we will have um, as much time as possible at the end for a question and answer section. So um, as I go through the presentation, if there's something that I didn't cover quite clearly or you want to um, ask another question, go ahead and type that in the Q&A box. Um, I have quite a few of my colleagues behind the scenes. We should be able to get to all of your general questions today, either um, in the text field or at the end of the session. Um, as I mentioned, we'll have that Q&A section for you guys. So um, use that Q&A section today. Um, first of all, get excited. It's summer is here. Um, I don't know about you, but it's about 90 degrees today here in Colorado. And I'm super excited for all of you to be heading out to your destinations, whether you're going to the US or whether you're venturing abroad. Um, we have a lot of information to cover and we are super excited for you guys. Just know that you are not alone. So that first bit is so true. A lot of students ask, am I gonna be the only person um, who doesn't have any friends traveling if you're traveling on your own? And actually the vast majority of our students, about 70 to 75%, depending on the year, do travel on their own. If you're traveling with a friend, awesome, um, all the better, but it's also um, super easy to travel on your own. You're gonna make friends. You'll be really surprised. You'll make best friends at the airport before you even get to your destination. So don't fear about that. Um, you're going to be making friends quickly and you're also going to have new best friends in your staff. Um, keep an eye out at the airport as soon as you get to your hub airport if you are traveling outside of the, the country. Uh, we're going to have staff wearing this t-shirt if you haven't already seen our new gear. Super cush. <laughs> um, and you guys are going to have um, a blue t-shirt with the exact same logo on it so it's super recognizable. We'll be in the airports um, there to support you. If you do have um, any troubles and we'll get to travel day a little bit later in the presentation but if you do have troubles we have quite a few staff in the airport to help you get to where you need to be um, safely and sadly. Um, I do highly recommend you know what to expect and the first step is tuning into today's webinar. So welcome. Good job. Step one. Um, the other steps I would say is utilize your resources. So we have a ton of information on the website. I'm actually going to show you right now. Um, if you haven't already um, seen your program page, so go to your program page on the website. You can use the find programs menu, select your country, select your program, and then there is a complete day-to-day -day itinerary. So make sure that you know what you're going to be doing on your program. Um, you'd be surprised at the students that show up and they had no idea what they were going to be doing. So that's a good step as well. Um, make sure you read through the day-to-day -day itinerary. We've got some photos available on the website. We have videos. We have the FAQ section, which is super helpful. Um, talk about accommodations and food and spending money and all those kinds of last-minute questions. Um, the packing list is located right here, and then there's also a map of where you're going to be traveling on every single program page. So a lot of really useful information, and I definitely recommend checking this out thoroughly before you head down to your country. We also have um, tons of information on social, tons of awesome videos and photos. We have a YouTube channel on, on um, YouTube, <laughs> um, and so there's tons of stuff out there for you guys to check out before your trip, so you're like fully versed and you know exactly what to expect. 
And then um, our blog. So I'll show you where to find that on our website um, in a couple slides here. But this also has a, a lot of really great information, not only about our programs, but just about um, jobs in this industry or um, what to expect when you're traveling on your own or um, what to study in, in school if you're looking to, to do this um, later once you graduate high school, things like that. Really, really cool content from alumni, from staff, from um, parents that have uh, sent the students with us. So that's a really uh, useful resource as well. Okay, so I know we always have a ton of questions about packing. As I mentioned, there are complete and thorough packing lists on every single program page. But we always get questions about what exactly to pack or what exactly do you mean by this or that. Um, this is an excellent slide and I actually welcome you to take a screenshot of this right now. This has, this features a lot of the really cool products and really uh, useful and functional products that we recommend that you bring along when you're packing. Um, it also features some of our amazing rustic gear. Um, every year we produce um, and we put out new gear. This year, I have to say, is exceptional. It's, it's stellar. So um, I will show you where to find the gear on the website as well. You can purchase things. Actually, we have a couple kits that are ready to go. We also have individual items that you can purchase. We've got the stickers. Uh, we've got some really cool special edition t-shirts if you want to get some, another t-shirt. Um, you also see on there, there's bug spray, there's um, a mini med kit, there's a universal adapter. So um, we do have a question often of what adapter do I need for my specific country? A quick Google search usually helps. We have that information oftentimes under the FAQs. But what I usually recommend to students is to get a universal adapter. And you can find them fairly inexpensive on Amazon um, or at your local store. And they are usually good for most of the places that you're going to travel. And so that way, it's not only specific to your country. You can use it for all your future travels. Um, there's quick dry towels on there. Um, hats are super useful for all the sunny destinations we have. So again, if you want to take a quick screenshot um, and then uh, use this for when you start your packing. And we're going to go into a little bit more detail on this slide. So um, what to bring. Again, there are some specific things. If you're going to be climbing Mount Kilimanjaro, take a look at that packing list because you have some very specific items that you're going to need. But everybody, we do want you to consider packing light. There are uh, weight regulations for every airline. And even if you are allowed to bring, say, 50 pounds, which is pretty average, um, we say size down from that. You, in most cases, um, some of these destinations, you're not going to have beautiful, smooth, paved roads all the time. So wheeled luggage is not the most useful. You might be in dirt or mud or um, gravel. And like trying to struggle with like a 50 pound suitcase on wheels is actually um, going to be kind of a pain in your travels. So try to pack as light as possible. Do one round of packing. Give yourself some time to look at it and try and downsize by 25% if you can, because um, that is really going to save you a lot of time and effort. You will want to um, be able to carry it at times. So oftentimes you'll see on the packing list, we suggest either a backpack or a duffel bag that you can put on your shoulder or even better, a duffel bag that has shoulder straps um, when need be. But that is because um, you'll be moving between um, sometimes vehicles or across terrain that um, it's just better to be able to carry on luggage and not have to be like lugging and dragging it through gravel. Um, so um, that is useful to have, uh, be able to carry it. Um, always, always, always bring a water bottle. Um, two, in, in some cases, um, we will always at Rustic Pathways provide as much drinking water as you can possibly drink and more. So um, in order to reduce our plastic waste, we want to make sure that students bring a reusable um, bottle. There's lots of brands out there. I myself, I always have my trusty Nalgene covered with all my places that I've traveled and it carries with me all the time um, because you'll want to make sure that you're hydrated and we'll make sure that you're hydrated. <laughs> um, in your carrying, you want to make sure that you have your passport and your appropriate visas. I am imagining that we have um, incredibly smart and prepared travelers. So you've all, if you do, if your country does require a visa beforehand, you've all already applied for that. If you haven't, make sure that you have countries like um, China, for example, or Tanzania is going to require a visa beforehand. You have to send your passport away and it does take some time. So make sure that you have um, looked into whether your country requires a visa beforehand um, or whether you need to bring money with you to purchase it at the airport. Um, and that information hey, should all be hey, in your Jesse? Yes. Jesse, this is Ryan. Sorry to interrupt you and sorry for everyone else. Um, could you check just the slide presentation quickly because I think we may be having an issue with the screen sharing.
And sorry for everyone while Jesse's getting this sorted. There we go. Thank you very much, Jesse. Oh, yeah, it popped out. Um, Ryan, did we see any of the slides? We did not to this point. <laughs> so um, for everyone on, we'll send out a recording of this if you want to go through the couple slides that she was mentioning about um, taking a couple screen grabs and some things like that. And sorry for the, for the trouble there. Thanks, Jesse. Okay, yeah, thanks, Ryan. Okay, so sorry about that glitch, everyone. Um, this is that um, slide if you want to take a, a look at that. Um, you can take a screenshot there. This is the one that has all the rustic gear. It's got the universal um, adapter on it. It's got some of the, the headlamps and the water bottle and all that. Feel free to take a screenshot now. Okay, moving on. Uh, what to bring pack light, bring your water bottle, um, passport and appropriate visas. Um, a copy of your passport. This is really important to bring along. Um, just take a quick, simple uh, copy and put it in your um, checked luggage, and then take a quick copy and put it in your carry-on luggage. So you have it in two separate places. That way, if something gets lost, um, you can always um, have that copy, and that is extremely useful. We will collect your passports when you land, um, but there are always a couple cases where the student misplaces it in the airport. Um, please don't do that. Be super careful, and also, pro tip, um, I do not recommend putting your passport in the back of the seat in front of you on the airplane. This is something that we do have happen every year. You use your passport to get on the flight and then you put it there to be handy and then you walk off the plane with it. So um, super important, make sure when you get on that plane, put your passport in a pocket that you know exactly where it's gonna be and then you're gonna hand it to your staff when you get to your destination country. Um, and those copies of passports will come in handy if you do happen to misplace it. Um, spending money, this is um, in the FAQs on each of our program pages. We usually recommend approximately $100 to $150 per week for incidentals, so snacks and souvenirs. It does vary quite a bit on both the student and the itinerary. Some itineraries, you're going to have a lot more of an opportunity to visit markets or go shopping or make donations. And other itineraries, you're going to be in kind of one location and you won't have as many opportunities. So check out the FAQs on the program page. I will go back to the program page since it looks like um, you weren't able to see that, sorry, again. Then, um, if you do wanna bring a camera, we definitely recommend that. In some cases, you will be able to use your phone. In other cases, you will not be. So if you're super keen on photography, we definitely recommend bringing additional cameras so that you don't have to leave your phone behind in cases where you wanna take pictures. And then appropriate clothing. This is also super, super key um, if you guys want to uh, take a look at the next slide that we've got here. Appropriate clothing depends pretty uh, greatly on your destination country, but a lot of the countries in which we travel to, we want to make sure that we respect the local culture. So even though it might be something like Fiji, where you, you anticipate being on the beach a lot and you want to wear your bikini, in some programs you're going to be in the highlands visiting very conservative, beautiful, welcoming uh, communities, but they're going to dress a little bit more conservatively and cover their shoulders and cover their knees. Similarly in Southeast Asia, in Africa, in other parts of the world. So do take a look at the packing list. I'm going to get out right now. On our website, this is where I was showing you before, and you can select your program. Right now we're on the Maji Safi project for Tanzania. If you scroll down past the general description, you can find the itinerary right here, the FAQs, the packing list, and the map right here. And the packing list is where it's going to give you a little bit more information about exactly what kind of dresses is appropriate. If you have any questions, again, please absolutely feel free to reach out and I'm going to give you a little bit of a, a more visual graphic here on this next one. So shorts is a really big question that we get here. Um, it's often, so I say, uh, I speak to families all the time that says, it, they say that it's, it's kind of hard to find longer shorts and I can totally understand that. We say a general rule of thumb is running shorts are too short for most of our communities um, in order to be respectful. We typically say um, soccer shorts, the longer soccer shorts, Basketball shorts are generally okay, and also hiking shorts. So any outdoor store like REI, someplace like that, they're gonna have hiking shorts that are the appropriate length. Also capris are great options. So you can see some examples there of what is appropriate and what is not in some of our more conservative communities. In some of your itineraries, there may be different standards for where you're gonna be. So for example, in Tanzania, when you're in the village, 
definitely more conservative, boys and girls covering their shoulders and wearing shorts that are um, approaching the knee. And then maybe you're gonna take um, the safari trip and then go out to Zanzibar when you're on the boat. Absolutely, you can be in a tank top, it's gonna be hot, you can wear your bikini. So um, just keep in mind, if you have a question about it, bring both. Bring something that you think is more conservative and bring something that you have a question about. And then your leaders in country will be able to direct you as to what is um, appropriate and what isn't. Um, there will be some cases where um, in Fiji, for example, we'll provide you with a sarong. Again, both men and women will wear this sort of wrap that's uh, um, traditional there. And that will be something that you'll wear quite often. So um, give us a call if you have any questions. And we just want to make sure that we're respectful to our communities. Another question we often get is, are yoga pants okay? And again, in our conservative communities, um, tight leggings or yoga pants are probably not gonna make the cut. If you're wearing a long shirt over it, um, sort of covering your, your hip area, um, then that is sometimes okay. But again, bring a pair of leggings, bring a pair of longer shorts, and we'll help you choose when to wear what. Um, okay, so what not to bring? This is, again, going back to packing light, too much stuff. I can tell you, um, the first time that I packed to go abroad, I had this huge, huge duffel bag that was bigger than I was, um, and I had no idea how to cut down. So this is where, if you think you're bringing too much, pick it up. If you can carry it okay, um, then you're probably okay. If you think it's a little bit too heavy and you wouldn't want to walk long distances, cut a few things out. You usually only need a couple pairs of shoes closed-toed pairs of shoe for a pair of shoes for service work, um, a nice pair of flip-flops or tevas for when you're going to be um, walking around town or and near the beach, um, and possibly one more pair of shoes if you're on a longer service trip and you want to um, have some like a pair of sneakers or something like that. Um, also, um, you can see there's a pair of like all-stars or keds there that are listed. That also works really well for walking around town or doing most work, but I often also recommend making sure that you have one good pair of shoes with good tread on them. Because again, in the communities where we are, often you're going to be in dirt or gravel and you want to make sure, um, even on small hikes, that you have something that is good tread and you're not going to be slipping in that mud with like a flat sole pair of shoes. We also um, don't want you to bring inappropriate clothing. This just comes back to making sure that you're wearing, uh, bringing the right clothing for your program. Uh, your leaders, again, will help you out uh, with that. And uh, we don't recommend bringing any laptops, tablets, or drones. Drones are becoming super popular, especially for photography. This is something you can call ahead and check if you're really into photography and you really wanna do like a really cool video and bring your drone, you can check with us. The, Honest to tr truth is that a lot of countries at this point don't even allow them. Fiji is a really good example. Drones are not allowed. So um, you won't be able to use them in most of the locations we are. Um, again, if you are making a video, sometimes you can use the drone at our base houses and on our property, Rustic Pathways, but in other locations, um, they're not allowed in, in many locations. And then of course, drugs, alcohol, cigarettes, everybody's gonna sign their, um, the participant enrollment agreement form, which goes into some of those regulations, but those are hard and fast rules. So no drugs, no alcohol, cigarettes. Um, please don't bring those with you and you can't purchase them in country. And um, that's a pretty straightforward one. So what to expect on travel days? Um, for our alumni, I know you all have been through this. Um, I'm excited for you guys to be helpful for the newbies because this is gonna be a, like kind of a crazy day. It may be your first time traveling out of the country and that's okay, that's what we're here for. So again, we are going to have airport coordinators in the airports, which are people that stay on the outside of security and their whole job is to help students get to where they need to be. They're usually located at the international check-in desk at the airport. We are going to send you some information, usually the week prior to your travel. Um, it's going to be a packet that comes in, the, in uh, your email, and it's going to have the um, airport uh, contact details. It's going to have a map of the airport. It's, it's going to have a bunch of information to make this as smooth as possible. Um, when you land, uh, if you're coming in on, in, on via car, great, uh, meet us at the International Check-in Desk. If you're coming in um, via plane, then you're going to want to head, um, collect your baggage, and then head straight to the International Check-in Desk. If you have any issues, you can give our airport a coordinator a call on that day, and they can assist you on how to get there. 
once you're at the International Check-in Desk, you should see a big C of blue and maroon shirts there with this slogan, uh, with this logo. And um, I would just encourage you to go ahead and meet people. Um, we will usually wait until there's a critical mass of students and then one of the chaperones will escort the entire group through security. They'll stay with the students all the way through the flight process to until they reach their destination, until they meet their in-country staff. So it makes it a really smooth process. Um, just so you know, as a student who's traveling with us, once you meet us in the airport, you're with us the entire time. Uh, we're not gonna uh, leave you to kind of be here on your own. You won't really have the chance to walk around markets on your own. And as parents, just so you know, you'll be with us um, the entire time. We're, we've got you in, in good hands. <laughs> um, always, always wear your Rustic Pathways t-shirt on travel days. So this includes both the travel day to your country of destination and the travel day back. And this is for a couple of reasons. It makes it super simple for you to identify your whole group in case you kind of get um, discombobulated and there's tons of people in the airport, you can spot your group and then we can spot you. So as flight leaders, it's super helpful to have everybody wearing the same shirt. We can all stay together as a group, um, both there and back. So just keep that in mind when you're on your trip. If you're wearing your shirt on service days, which is fine, just know that you're going to wear it on the way back. And we also have the ability to purchase more t-shirts if you'd like to have a couple on hand. That's always usually super helpful. Um, pack snacks, water bottle, and spending money. I always, always encourage you to bring your own snacks. Um, you don't have to bring a lot, but for travel days, it's kind of nice to have them on hand, especially if you fall asleep during the meal service or whatnot. So bring a few of your favorite snacks, uh, carry on your water bottle, and then um, your spending money, keep that in your carry-on as well. Um, I already mentioned to locate your airport coordinator and flight chaperones. That should be pretty straightforward and easy. Um, again, um, day before, day um, of, if you are having any troubles, just give us a call and we can help you out with that. Um, bring a deck of cards, bring some like, fun little game to, to um, play while you're waiting in the airport. We usually ask students to be there about four hours before departure, and that's just in case your domestic flight is delayed, which does happen every single summer. This gives you some peace of mind. But that, if everything goes according to plan, does give you some time to, to hang out in the airport. So if you want to bring um, bananagrams or a deck of cards or any other fun new games, um, that's a great idea to kind of uh, pass the time. And then meet your fellow travelers, make friends, and then if you do have to step away, if you need to go to the bathroom or something, we do always recommend using the buddy system. Just going to take a quick glance and see if we have any pending questions. Looks like my team is getting getting to them all. So, um, quick question about converting currency. So I kept mentioning that you need to bring some um, spending money. It's always okay to bring U.S. dollars in every case, even if you're coming from outside the country. If you're coming from uh, Mexico or, or somewhere in Europe, you um, can bring U.S. dollars and then we can exchange them in country. We'll always assist the students in taking them to a foreign exchange location and they can change into the local currency. So don't worry about getting the local currency before you leave. Um, we'll make that a simple process. Our cell phone policy. So this is uh, evolving every year at Rustic Pathways we really want to encourage students to be as disconnected as possible. And I know this can be a little daunting for parents who are used to hearing from their kids every single day, but we really find that it's such a rare, rare thing these days for students to totally disconnect from their devices and fully immerse in their location and their experience and their new friends and get the most out of it. Um, so we really challenge you to, to leave behind your social, leave behind your snap um, and be fully present in your program and get the most out of it. Um, that being said, we do think that cell phones, we have found that they are um, helpful on travel days. So it can be helpful, obviously, to, to meet up with your family when you come back and if you need to contact our airport coordinator. So we don't disallow cell phones entirely, but there are going to be very specific times in which you're allowed to use them on the program, which does vary a little bit on the program. Some programs will have access to Wi-Fi. Most do not. Um, if you're staying at one of our base houses, no Wi-Fi. So that's something that you should be able to find either in the FAQs or by giving us a call. But even if there is Wi-Fi, I would personally challenge you to disconnect and um, fully be present. 
that brings me to communication at home. So parents are saying, all right, all right, I want my student to disconnect as well, but I want to know they're okay, which totally makes sense. So at Rustic Pathways, we have um, a 24-hour emergency hotline. You can always contact us if you need to at any time of day or night. Um, that will be open and available to you, and we can patch you into your student on the ground if, if need be. Also, um, from our end, you will, all parents will receive a, an email when the students have landed, and here's one important caveat. It's not the moment that students land. We don't kind of wait for the plane to touch down and click a button to send the email. We want to make sure that all the students have arrived safely, that nothing happened, that all their luggage has arrived safely. And so um, give us some time when the students land. It may take an hour or two just to make sure that we have the whole group through customs with their baggage and they're on the transport to their um, location. So give us a couple hours and then you'll be seeing that email in your inbox to let you know that everybody's arrived safely um, and soundly. And um, if you're on a longer program, we will have updates. So you will receive an update from us primarily, or essentially we do want our, our leaders to be focused on the students, but we will also be sending photos when possible. When possible, we have communication coordinators that I highly, highly recommend that you follow on social. Um, we can send that list out. If you don't have that um, available, you can always uh, email the general line or email your PTA and we can give you who to follow on Instagram, but we do have um, communication coordinators in most of our uh, regions. And those will be posting some fun photos from all of our programs. And um, though we can't guarantee there will be a picture of your student on the trip, uh, there will, it will be able to give you an idea of what's going on in country and that um, some fun examples, yeah. So um, in preparing to head out, we definitely want you to be ready to make new friends. So this is gonna be pretty straightforward and easy. Uh, make new friends at the airport, on the airplane, on your layovers, when you land. Um, I would just recommend that you are open to everything. I think you'll be surprised on these trips that um, seniors will make friends with freshmen, freshmen with seniors, um, all sorts of crazy combinations that you may not see in school. Uh, these programs are, fun and super powerful and experiences. So make new friends, try new foods. Um, I definitely recommend stepping out of your box a little bit. If you think that you are a pastatarian and you only eat pasta and pizza, um, there might be some challenges, oppor challenge opportunities for you on these trips and I highly recommend um, taking them. I think there's never been a student who has tried something and regretted it. You may not enjoy it, you may not like eating that uh, cockroach or, <laughs> um, or bug or chocolate covered spider or something like that, um, but then you have a cool story to tell about it. So um, take a look at the, for those opportunities. If you think you don't like something, try it anyway because you might find that you're, you've been mistaken your whole life. <laughs> um, Learn a new language. This is actually um, a pro tip. I recommend bringing along a conversational book. If you don't already speak the local language, um, Lonely Planet and a couple other companies put out these awesome little tiny booklets that you can bring with you that have um, conversational phrases. Um, and if you can pick one of those up before your program, memorize a couple and then surprise your in-country staff, your local staff, that is a great way to impress them. So I highly recommend um, grabbing one of those conversational books while you're there, um, especially if you're gonna be in any of the smaller villages. Um, make sure you go with the flow. This is really key. It seems kind of straightforward and obvious, but you'll be surprised no matter how prepared you are um, and you know the itinerary inside and out, things can change. Maybe there's a rain out and there's a day that you were definitely gonna go zip lining. It's pouring down right, cats and dogs and we decide to switch zip lining to another day and we have an alternative activity for the rain day. Um, we will uh, do the best we can to remain true to that itinerary, but we also have um, contingency plans when things go, go wrong. So just go with the flow, things can, things can happen, and um, that's all part of the adventure. And then finally, challenge yourself, which kind of encapsulates all of the above. Um, these are the programs that you're really gonna remember in high school and out of high school when you're growing and when you venture off into your own travels. Um, this is the opportunity you have to really challenge yourself and again, get outside of your, out of your box that you're more comfortable in. So um, seize every opportunity. 
Okay, so this is also a really big um, topic that we always get lots of questions. Um, our donations policy. So yes, in you will receive an email if you haven't already from your in-country team. Um, this is going to have a ton of really important information and it's actually a really um, important way for our country teams to give out very um, up-to-date information. So for example, if in Tanzania it's been a particularly rainy season, maybe they'll let you know that in that email. So that's a really important email to look out for. It's going to have a lot of really important information for you, including a list of potential donations. This is something that's really important to stick to because we have found, um, and this is something that we're working on all the time, but we have found that though there's always good intentions, let's say your father is a dentist and he wants to send 500 toothbrushes. Always, you can always reach out to us and see if that's okay, but we may have um, on good knowledge that there is a dentist in the village where they live and he sells toothbrushes and that's part of his income and we'd hate to sort of disrupt that flow and the economy of that local community. So those are kinds of things that we take um, into consideration. We communicate with our communities and we find what is best um, fits their needs, and then we provide that to you. So take a look at that email. We're gonna provide you a list of specific donations that could be useful. Um, another thing that I always recommend is if you really wanna make a donation and you're not quite sure what, bring a little extra cash with you. This gives you the opportunity actually to um, arrive in country, spend some time with the communities, learn about the people, learn about the needs. And then at the end of your program, you can always say, you know what, I noticed in the local elementary a library that there were no books on animals and I love animals and I'd like to purchase books in country from a local vendor so it's like a win-win you're providing the books for the community and you're also supporting the local economy and, and purchasing from the local uh, merchandisers so that's always a really great way to um, both be super involved and make a donation out of the goodness of your heart but also um, make that decision when you're there and you actually kind of learn about the needs of the community so um, we are unfortunately not able to accept donations of material goods after the program. It just, it's crazy with the international shipping. We've had um, packages get lost and, and packages get stuck in customs for six months. And so it's just a little bit too logistically challenging. Um, it is something that uh, I will talk a little bit later um, about being involved as an alumni, but we are unable to take them afterwards um, and receive them on the ground. And um, I do want to talk a little bit about the Rustic Pathways Foundation. Um, this is a nonprofit um, organization that we have that supports projects around the world um, in various formats. So some of them are going to be ongoing projects that you will see on the ground. And then we have additional um, stages of the, the project that we'll be completing with the foundation. Other projects are completely separate from what we offer for students. Um, for example, we may bring electricity to a village. It's not really something that our students are prepared to, to run power lines. It's something we have to work with directly uh, with the local government. And so those are the projects that we um, fund through the uh, foundation. And we absolutely, absolutely love to have student involvement. You can set up a fundraising page um, you can do fundraising activities, events, um, bake sales, those kinds of things. We have an excellent packet on our website and um, also so a ton of information at uh, rusticpathways.org if you want to check out information about our foundation and learn more about those projects. There's some really, really awesome stuff that we've got involved um, that we've got going on out there. Um, this is also just as a side note, the foundation is somewhere where some of our students who had amazing ideas of things that they'd like to do have actually um, brought their projects to fruition through the foundation. So I uh, highly encourage you to learn more about that. Okay, so hopefully that answered most of your questions. Again, we've got some time at the end of the presentation, but um, after you've completed your program, you come back and you're super excited, you just had the time of your life and you can't stop telling stories, um, we do have a few things for you to know. We are going to send a post-trip survey and we are gathering data on the changes and the evolution that our students go through. This is really important for us in the development of our programs and development of our whole philosophy. Um, so we, will, we highly encourage you to participate in the pre-trip, post-trip surveys. It gives us a lot of valuable information and it's, it's your chance to kind of use your voice if whether it's negative, positive, or you just have some great suggestions from your observations, that's a great way for you to, to give back to future programs and future students and the communities. Um, we do have a hashtag so rustic contest that we're running again this year. Alumni will be very familiar with this. This is a social contest. This is a photography contest where you're gonna post your favorite photos. 
Um, one key, the, the picture will not count if it was posted during your program. Again, we want to discourage you to be on social during your program. It will only count if it was posted upon your return. And then we're giving out prizes every single week. So you're welcome to enter every week. There's a prize every week. And then at the end of the summer, drum roll, there is a grand prize and it is a free Rustic Pathways program in 2019. So um, keep your eye out for amazing moments. This can be um, anything, portraits or landscapes or just glimpses of like the, the experience that you're having, the power that it's had, um, or the effect it's had on you. Um, snap that grab it, keep it for um, when you return, and then go ahead and enter our contest and use the hashtag so rustic and um, good luck. We also have Rustic Squad and Impact Ambassadors. So I'm gonna go out of this for a moment and show you on our website where you can find more information. These are two amazing ways to stay involved. Once you return from your trip, we realize um, you've got the rest of summer and then you're going to be rushing into another school year. Um, but the fall is an excellent way to kind of carry on and carry forward your experience. So right here underneath the who we are, this is where you're going to find the Alumni Association. So I'm going to click into this. I also wanted to show you real quick um, for those uh, who are looking still for more packing information. We have um, the Rustic Gear page right here. This is where you can purchase um, kits and also individual items that we featured on that page and many more. <laughs> who we are, Alumni Association. So just, I won't run through all of this, um, you guys can do that on your own time, but this is where you can learn more about being an impact ambassador. This is where um, students who want to fundraise for either their own projects, specific projects. This is a really, really cool program that we highly encourage students to look into and be a part of. The uh, Rustic Squad is kind of our brand ambassador. So if you're like a huge fan of Rustic Pathways and you tell all your friends and family, um, this is your opportunity to kind of actually um, participate in surveys, in polls. We actually poll our squad about new program ideas, about um, our gear and all sorts of um, things that we want to get our students feedback. We wanna hear your voice. So um, if this is you, check out the Rustic Squad. And then there's also information about our STAR alumni program, about possible internships, all sorts of really cool stuff. We do have a video contest that we'll be running this year um, that is unedited video clips that we're going to actually put together in our um, summer recap. So all sorts of information um, that I challenge you or recommend that you take a look at. And then we're at our Q&A section. So um, I know that we've got hundreds and hundreds of people joining us. Hopefully I covered some of the more general information. Please, please, please do reach out. I've got a fantastic um, team of colleagues that Global Program Advisors, our whole goal is to make this as smooth as possible and answer any and all questions. So please feel free to give us a call anytime. Um, but I am going to take some of your text questions now and feel free to continue putting those in the Q&A section. Someone, someone wants to know what program I'm leading this, this year. Unfortunately, I won't be leading any summer programs this year. I have um, led programs in about 10 different countries and I miss it. Um, I, I usually run a group trip here and there um, throughout the season, but this summer I will be spending some time in Tanzania, um, re-familiarizing myself with some of the programs and visiting some of the communities that, I've, that are like family to me. So I'll be there. Um, in two weeks in the end of the summer, starting July 24th, if y'all are traveling out there, if you're flying to Tanzania, I will be your flight leader. So, hi! <laughs> nice to meet you guys. Um, feel free to come up and say hi and let me know that you tuned into the webinar. Uh, okay, so question about swimsuits. I'm actually going to go back to the packing page um, real quick to show you that. Bikinis um, are okay in certain locations. So this is another um, great way to just pack, check the packing list. I would say what we recommend instead of bikinis are um, athletic two pieces. So they've got kind of the sports bra look um, and they, they cover a little bit more. That's just gonna be um, a little bit easier to, to use in those areas. If you're gonna be out on a boat, for example, the whole time, or you're gonna be on a beach in Dominican Republic, bikinis are okay, but some locations they're not. So it does depend on your particular itinerary and um, just give us a call to figure out which is better. Um, so we have a question about gifts for host families. If you're going to be staying with a host family during your program, a gift is always really nice. 
um, they never expect much. So don't feel like you need to go super elaborate or exorbitant. Um, we always recommend, or I recommend, um, postcards from your hometown. Um, if you have something that you're really known for, like if you're coming from Salt Lake City and you're um, gonna bring along some saltwater taffy or something like that, or I guess you wouldn't bring crab from Maryland, but <laughs> um, something that your town is known for, that's always really fun, a magnet from your town so they can put that on their fridge and remember your stay. Um, I would say little gifts from your hometown that's specific for you and your family. And another thing that I always recommend if you have a host family is to bring along um, photos of your family. They always really love seeing what your friends and family are like from home. Um, so that's always kind of fun to bring along as pictures of your own family. Let's see. We talked about converting currency. Um, just to kind of reiterate, you will be able to um, convert currency in countries. So just bring along your US dollars with you. Um, the add-on activities for Fiji, they um, are arranged in country. So you do not have to choose your side trip, or your add-on activities before you get there. You'll get there, um, figure out what all your friends are gonna be doing, and then you just let your leaders know and they'll take care of it with your, with your um, parents back in the States. So many questions coming in. Um, okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and show this short page again. Um, always kind of hard to, to uh, determine which is best. Um, so there's some good examples for both guys and girls. Capris are great options. You can get some really flowy linen capris that um, are great for hot weather, provide some um, breezy airiness, and also are covering your knees. Um, again, sort of the rule of thumb with those are, um, if, if you're wondering if it's too short, bring a second pair uh, just in case. And then if they're good, they're good, and your program leaders will help you determine which one is better. Oh, that's a good question. So um, will you be able to connect with students before your trip? And Rustic Pathways does not um, set up groups beforehand. We've found that you can kind of, with social media these days, it's kind of hard to really know um, who you're talking to, and you can kind of form preconceptions. And so what we found is actually a lot better just to meet at the airport. Um, you, we do, we have had students that have used either Instagram or Facebook to create uh, groups for their, for their trip. And so you can always check on Facebook or um, if you see an Instagram from your country, check the comments because there's often students saying like, hey, I'm traveling on July 9th, anybody else? So um, we have seen students connecting that way if you'd like to try that, but we don't set up the group beforehand just because we like to have the journey start together at the airport. Yeah, let me go back to the website and just show you um, the how it works section has a lot of information if you do want to run through the FAQs, the safety page, um, learn more about our community service. Um, this is where you can see rustic gear. I'm actually going to take you here. And there's a lot of really cool products. So and this and this is all new. If you guys haven't seen this recently, we've totally updated it and revamped it. And we have all of our brand new, like swanky um, designs and stuff. So I highly recommend you checking it out, even if you haven't before, um, or if you have, because there's lots of updates. We have some really cool gear, um, the baseball tee, got tote bags, got stickers for your water bottles. If you want to get some new stickers. Um, and there's more, so quick dry towels and things like that. If you need recommendations for, um, for example, other types of bags besides the Patagonia bag we have here or um, backpacks or things like that, give us a call. I love talking about that stuff. And then just to reiterate, here's the Alumni Association. That you can find under the Who We Are section, um, along with other events such as this um, throughout the rest of the year. And then um, the packing list is going to be on your individual program page. So you can also locate that in your portal. Um, if anybody received that recent um, 
reminder email about your portal. Um, that's just going out to everybody who's enrolled with us. That's just a quick reminder to go through your portal, check and make sure everything's done. If you have everything done, you're good to go. Um, that did go out to everybody though. So if you're on this program, Young Explorers Down Under, scroll down. This is one of our younger programs. And Epic Outback. So there's your itinerary, there's your FAQ, and there's your packing list. Right there. So it'll have quite a bit of information there for you. Uh, just so you know, also, for those of you who are signing off, I uh, really appreciate your time. It's been amazing to have you be joined by everybody. Call us, call us, call us with any other questions, and we will actually have a recording of this, and we'll send it out to those who were unable to attend. Um, so if you do know anybody who wasn't able to attend live, we'll send you it. We'll send them a recording. And there's the packing list. Okay, I'm gonna wait for a few more questions. We might be running out just before the top of the hour, which is great. Um, I'll give you a few more minutes to send some questions over. And then otherwise, um, wish you a fantastic journey this summer. It's gonna be incredible no matter where you're going. I'm really, really excited for everybody. <laughs> Any last questions? My favorite color is blue. <laughs> so we got one more coming in. Um, as far as sleeping bags and pillows, that will be in your packing list. Um, it will specifically say whether you need a sleeping pad, a sleeping bag or sleeping pad or any additional gear um, or pillows. Oftentimes those are provided at our base houses. Um, but if you check the packing list, that'll let you know whether you do need to bring those things along or not. Um, pajamas. Um, I usually just sleep in one of my t-shirts um, that hasn't been too dirty by, um, by service work. You can bring along a light t-shirt um, that's not usually that, um, you don't have to worry to be that, too, that conservative because we are going to be um, in your sleeping quarters. Um, but just keep in mind that if you are staying in a village or whatnot, a t-shirt and some um, light shorts are, will be just fine. And also, depending on your destination, you might be in a colder destination where t-shirt and light shorts aren't going to be appropriate. So it <laughs> um, just depends on your particular program. Okay, and then I'm going to just put up here the phone number and an email. If you do want to contact us in the coming days, um, please do. That's what we're here for. And um, one more question about um, cash versus an ATM. This is highly dependent on the country. So um, I always, always recommend bringing along some cash with you for emergency purposes. Um, Australia is a pretty safe destination to use your ATM card, but there's going to be some countries where the ATM isn't working or uh, it malfunctions or your card doesn't work. Um, so it's always better to bring along some cash with you. Uh, we will have a safe location in most uh, programs to put that and your leaders will go through all of that with you um, in order to keep that safe. But um, cash is always just easier to convert to local currency than plastic that may or may not work in the ATM. The spending money information can be found on the FAQ section on the program page or give us a call. We, like I said, we usually recommend about $100 to $150 a week, but it depends on your spending habits, if you want to make a donation, um, if you're going to do some, some of the larger activities like bungee jumping or something like that that's additional. Um, just make sure that you're aware of that. There's also a section in the FAQs that mentions what are the larger um, add-on activities. So bungee jumping, something like scuba diving or skydiving, um, if it's not included in your itinerary, it'll be listed there in the FAQs in the additional activity section. Um, and it will tell you how much those um, events or activities are. Okay, I think that might round us out. Um, 
Again, thank you so much for attending. Um, we are so excited for you and have a fantastic evening. Talk to you soon.